This program is brought to you in part by SalCal Real Estate Connections. Welcome to Race in Action Today. We're here today to bring you the action from our favorite race venue, Lime Rock Park, the road racing center of the East. And the event today, and I'll tell you, it's my favorite event of the year. The Lime Rock Historic Vintage Festival is just an outstanding event. It'll feature classic cars, vintage race cars, you name it, it'll be here. I think you better find a comfortable chair and relax. We're about to see what vintage racing's all about and the people who make it happen. To kick off the Vintage Festival weekend, they would have a parade of sorts that would actually go from Lime Rock Park and would go through the towns of Lakeville and then from there it would go to Salisbury, the main street, loop around and then head for Falls Village which would be the culmination of the parade. And I will tell you this, it was just one outstanding parade and something to see. All these beautiful vintage cars uh, going through the, the town and the people just loved it. And I believe most of the cars looked like they were British cars, especially NGs. But it was just so great to see these cars up on the street and uh, the reception they got from the people who were lined up uh, on the sides of the street was really something. And believe me, this, this vintage weekend is just a great, great event. And I can't stress enough how important and not only important, but it, you'll just have a great time to see all these beautiful vintage cars and get to meet some of these people close up and personal. It's really something. I mean, you have access to the paddock area. There's really no area that you, you can't go outside of the racing area. And believe me, they just put on an excellent show, and the people uh, and staff and everybody involved at Lime Rock just do an absolute wonderful job. As we see some of the cars going by, I mean, they are just flawless. You know, it's hard to believe that a car could be that old and be in this kind of condition. And not only is it in that kind of a condition, I mean, some of these cars are like one-offs. I, I mean, they only made one of You know, this particular MG you're seeing right in front of us there is really, really a very special car. And then there's kind of the street versions, uh, too, are kind of mixed in. This MGA was another beautiful example. And I'll tell you, all in all, this event is starting to become, uh, I call it the crown jewel of the East. I mean, you just see everything and anything here. And it's going to be uh, really fun now to, to do this show. I'm going to concentrate on uh, the Group 1 is actually supposed to be for pre-war cars and open wheel antique cars as they become a very favorite item of mine and as you will see there's going to be some very interesting cars in this class and it's uh, just going to be a fun show to watch I hope everybody enjoys it and uh, I really want to hope everybody will come up and visit us at this great event next year.
Yes, we have David Dutu with us who owns this absolutely gorgeous 1925 Bugatti. I'm going to tell you, this car is stunning, and I got a feeling you know a little bit about this car. A little bit. It's a wonderful car. I've owned it now for about seven or eight years. I uh, had a different type of Bugatti before and decided to move up to the eight-cylinder car, which is an absolute wonderful machine. Yeah, these cars, uh, the race in history is just unbelievable. Yes, this car actually was an early car, 1925. It was a 35A, which means it's not supercharged. It was delivered to uh, a doctor in uh, Strasbourg who then immediately got rid of the car, and it went to Willie Hoffman, Hoffman Roche Chemical Company, who then used it, uh, lent it to Louis Chiron. Uh, who became world champion in 1930. So this was Chiron's first ride in 1926 at Miramar. Now, did you seek this car out? Was this something you were always looking for? Well, yes. As an engineer, I really appreciate the intricacies of, of a Bugatti. They're very unique pieces of equipment. Um, I had an, a smaller class Bugatti, a Type 37, which is a four-cylinder car. And um, as racers, we always like more speed. Hence, we went to the, we searched out a really, uh, original car, this car is running about 90% of its original parts and bodywork on it, unlike a lot of cars, or rebuilt cars. And we wanted a really authentic car, and this is one we did. It took a few years to find it, but we found it, yes. Now, is the color what the, what it was or no? Well, it, as best we can tell, it's, there's a real dispute on the blue of the Bugattis. Uh, there's a light racing blue, and then there's this darker blue. This is more the Galois blue, and the story goes is that Bugatti's wife smoked Galois cigarettes, and she wanted the cars to be Galois blue. <laughs> <laughs> Women get their way, you know. All the time. <laughs> well, is this your first trip to Lime Rock? It is. I, I came here many, many years ago in SEC activity, and this is the first time I've been here, and uh, I bet you 20 years, and it's really wonderful to be back up north. Now, did you, you have a chance to go out yet today? Yes, we just finished a uh, practice session, had quite a bit of fun, absolutely. This, uh, this place really gets your attention. I mean, there's not resting much here. Well, the great thing about a Bugatti out here is that this is really a momentum racer, meaning that you don't have a whole lot of power unless you have a supercharger. So you have to keep up your speed. You can't break real heavy in the corner. So basically you use your momentum and you keep that momentum up and you drift it through the turns. This is the perfect track for a Type 35 Bugatti. Oh, yeah, this track likes nimble cars, let me tell you. Well, I'm learning that today. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to keep an eye out there. I got a feeling you're going to have some fun and really do well, and I have to commend you. The car is gorgeous. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the fact that you're looking at such a wonderful car. It's a piece of history, and it's going to live on for someone else later. Absolutely. Thank you for your interview. Thank you very much. Yes, we have Scott Ebert with us with this gorgeous car. I'm not sure what it is, but it looks like some kind of a sprint car or something, but I sure you know a little bit about it. Yeah, I do. It's a uh, Dreyer Ford Special, which in 1939 was called a big car. And then uh, after the war, they called these cars with 90-inch wheelbase sprint cars. So before the war, it's a big car. Built by Pop Dryer in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, he built the frame and the aluminum body, and then he put uh, 1939 Ford running gear on it. He also built Indy cars and midgets, midgets as well as uh, big cars. Now tell me, how did you acquire this car? Uh, a fellow named uh, John Jacobson bought, found the car behind a garage in disrepair in 1991 and was able to buy it. Between 1939 and 1991, the car was used as a dirt track racer. And when John bought it in 91, he uh, decided to uh, set it up for road racing, which is what we're doing here, rather than oval dirt tracks. So he uh, restored the car, John did, uh, put a fresh engine in it, a, a V8. It didn't have a V8 in it when he found it. It had a Ford Cortina engine in it. Uh, but it originally had a V8, so he put the V8 back in it and uh, changed the suspension, put all the same wheels on each corner. Uh, dirt track cars have three different size tires. And uh, road raced it very successfully. Uh, he he uh, won Pittsburgh twice in it. Uh, and he uh, then sold it to me in 2000. I bought it in 2000. Where are you from, Scott? Crystal River, Florida. That's over on the West Coast. 
about an hour north of Tampa where the manatee hang out. No, oh, you're used to the heat. Uh, yeah, but I don't like the sun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, we saw you out there. It looks like you're having a good time out there. The car, the car drives very well. It's a very, very torquey, uh, tremendous acceleration, probably, except for the two Alphas that were with us, it's the fastest car in acceleration on the track. Well, let me tell you, you're with good company with those two Alphas. Yeah, maintenance isn't as high. <laughs> well, we want to thank you for having a word with us, and we're going to keep an eye on the racetrack because it looks like you get around this place pretty good. That's right. Appreciate talking to you. Thanks, Scott. Right. You were excellent. Yes, we have Jeff Jacobson with this always gorgeous black Morgan three-wheeler. And I'll tell you, every time I see this car, it looks better and better. How you doing this, Jeff? Um, well, Larry, it, um, it's an interesting car. Uh, Morgan's the oldest privately owned car company in the world. In fact, they still make cars in the original factory where they started in 1909. Um, this is a wonderful car on the track. It has an awful lot of power. It's very lightweight. Um, it's very fiddly, though. There's a lot of things going on here, and it requires a lot of maintenance. I've been racing it about 10 years. I bought it from a guy in Sydney, Australia, that had raced it 10 years down there. And um, Lime Rock here is our favorite track, but we've raced everywhere from Montreblanc in Canada to New Hampshire to Pittsburgh, all over. But it's good fun. Now, where are you from, Jeff? Cornwall. Uh, oh. We're really lucky. We're just 20 minutes down the road. I mean, we have people here that have brought their cars in from Europe, from the West Coast, and all I have to do is drive 20 minutes, and here I am. This is your home track. It's our home track, and uh, it's really a track that more people should take advantage of. It's uh, not an accident, Larry, that they call it Lime Rock Park. I mean, it's a park, and it's a great place for families to come. We love this place. Anyway, it's, uh, it's just wonderful, and we're awfully glad to be here. Now tell me, driving a three-wheeler, I mean, is it a lot different than, than a four-wheel car? Um, a bit. It's, it's very fast. It's very stable up to the point it's not stable. And you don't get an awful lot of warning between the two. Um, it'll drift around corners. Um, you can really position it very well. But if you're going hot into a corner and if you happen to hit oil with the back tire, uh, things can get very exciting very quickly. Wow. <laughs> I read an article recently where they were going to build brand new cars. They, they are. They launched them at the uh, Geneva show in, I think, January this year. Um, and they actually look very similar to this body style. Um, they have American-made, large uh, V-twin engines in the front. Um, they're quite fast. They use a Mazda 5-speed transmission. Uh, they still evidently have a few production bugs to work out, so they've had some demo models put out to the press, but nothing has been produced yet. But they will gladly, Larry, take your $50,000 now. Wow, 50000 Yes, that's it. you got to be feeling good. You do, or maybe uh, <laughs> after a few beers would be better. <laughs> Well, this car here, I'm sure, is worth a few dollars, but I have to commend you. You keep it gorgeous, and we're, we're always looking for you out there because you really do a great job. Well, listen, thank you very much, and thank you for coming. Thanks a lot. Okay. You were always excellent, Jeff. Bye-bye. Take care. Take care. That's okay. Yes, we come across a familiar face here, George Holman and his absolutely beautiful studs. I'll tell you, George, every time I see this car, it looks better and better. What are you doing with this car? Well, we're racing it. Uh, we were just come back from California at Monterey, and we had a great time out there, and we're, uh, now we're down here to race it again. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know what you're doing, but this car keeps looking better and better. You must be uh, hiring a bunch of gremlins here to shine this car up. I won't tell you my secrets on that one. Okay. <laughs> so, you've been out to Monterey, and with this particular car, yes. and uh, how did it do out there? Well, we did pretty well. We were there, were there were 43 cars that were supposed to make the field. I think about 40 cars made the field. We qualified 15th, and we were doing pretty good until the last lap, and then we had a, we were up to ninth, and then we had a little trouble. We had a little coming together on a on a course. Unfortunately, my driver made a mistake, but he, he, um, everything's fine. No, nobody got hurt, and that's the best thing. 
Now, who drives the car? Well, th th this is John Lee was driving in, in, in uh, California, and uh, Mac Hul Hulbert is driving from England. He's driving it here, this, here, here today. Yeah, we're going to have to have a word with him, too. Uh, now, is this your, fa you know, is th this event is like your home event, isn't it? Oh, yeah, this is my home event. I've been, been coming here for many, many years. And I also go here, come here with the VSCCA for their club events, too. It's a great, it's a great, wonderful track. Uh, I, I miss the concrete in some of the corners, though. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, not really. I don't really miss the concrete. Oh, yeah, I could imagine. Uh, I'll tell you, and I like that, that little sprint car. You still have that? Yeah, I got that uh, little Plymouth-powered, four-cylinder, Plymouth-powered sprint car. That's, that's one of my favorite cars to drive here. It's uh, just put it in top gear and just motor around. Yeah, I've been looking at a, an antique midget myself, and uh, I'll tell you, I hope I could put something together because I think I could have some fun with it. You, you, you'll definitely have some fun. Those, those are really great cars to have a lot of fun with. Well, we want to thank you, George. You're always great to talk to, and we're certainly glad you have the car here, and we'll have to keep an eye on it out in the racetrack. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, George. You're always All great. Right. See you. Yes, we have Tom Ellsworth with us, owns this absolutely gorgeous car. I couldn't even begin to tell you what it is, but I got a feeling you know a little bit about this car, Tom. I think uh, by now I've learned quite a bit. It's, uh, it's a special, that is, it's one of a kind, and it's based on a French Amel car, uh, which was wrecked in the early 30s, and they took the chassis. Uh, threw away the body and built a new body and put Ford engine transmission and differential in it. What kind of engine is it? It's I mean, a, as far as it a six it's, it's a Model B four-cylinder Model B Ford engine. Okay. And uh, they raced it. Uh, George Rand had it built actually in New York City. And uh, they raced it from about 35 until about 1940. Uh, in what they called uh, round the house races, that is through streets and things uh, uh, during that period. And then the organization, which was called the Automobile Racing Club of America, uh, dissolved at the start of World War II and came back after the war as the Sports Car Club of America. Oh, so that was the original, uh, the original SCCA then? That's right. And many of the people that were involved in it pre-war, came back and uh, were involved in it uh, post-war. Now, have you been to different places around the country? Uh, with this, I've been to Watkins Glen, uh, the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. uh, I've run, this ran Attention the Mount Washington Hill Climb in 1938. It placed second. And I've run Mount Washington a number of times. Uh, Mount Equinox, uh, of course, of Lime Rock. What do you like the best? Driving it. I know, but uphill or road course? Oh, I, I think that the the course I like the best is the Pittsburgh uh, Grand Prix because it is on city streets. Wow. The way this car was driven back in the 30s. I mean, there's curbs and stoplights and trees and all sorts of stuff. And it's it's a one it's a one of a kind race here in the United States. It's the only real street race left in the country. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a very rare case. I know. Well, I'll tell you, we're gonna keep an eye out there for you. I got a feeling you're certainly gonna do well. But I know, uh, judging by that smile on your face, you're certainly gonna have a good time. Well, the idea is to finish. Finish and have fun. Yeah, right. That's right. Thanks a lot, Tom. You were excellent. Have a good day. You too. Yes, I have Rob Burt with us, owns this absolutely gorgeous Aston Martin. I'll tell you, I have never seen one like this, but I got a feeling you know a little bit about this car. Well, that's uh, true, Larry, I, I do. Um, I've known, known this particular car for about uh, 15 years. It belonged to a very good friend of mine uh, for many years, and he kept it in France. Um, it's a 1938 uh, Aston Martin 2-liter short chassis. Um, it was rebodied from a touring body to the more uh, uh, sort of racing style uh, Ulster body. 
um, and uh, I've had it for a, for a while and uh, enjoy driving it here at Lime Rock and, and uh, certainly other places too. The beauty of these old Astons is that you can, you can actually drive them on the road uh, or you can race them. They're very, uh, um, uh, very easy to drive uh, and, and very easy to drive quite quickly. They are the very low center of gravity. They have an underslung uh, suspension on the chassis. It's underslung performer very well. Um, they don't have a lot of horsepower. Uh, probably about 125 horsepower. So uh, when you race the car, you've got to get the speed up and carry the momentum around. Momentum around. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, this car is absolutely gorgeous. I, I mean, I, I've seen some cars, but uh, boy, I'll tell you, I don't know who restored this car, but they ex did an excellent job. They did do a beautiful job. It was done in the England, uh, uh, in, in, in the UK rather, by a, a coach builder. Um, and it, it's not a, you know, it's not a new restoration. This, what you're looking at, is basically 15 years old. And since the restoration was done, the car has raced uh, uh, in France, Mallorca, the UK, uh, and the USA. So you know, it lives a very active life. It's not a garage queen. It does get a, it does get prepared uh, once a year for the uh, Aston Martin Concours, which is held here in Connecticut. Um, and uh, that, you know, other than that, it's on the road and it's, uh, it, it lives an active life. Wow, I'll tell you, I'm very impressed. I can't wait to see you out in this racetrack. What group are you in today? Uh, group one with the pre-war cars. With the pre-war cars, yeah. That's becoming my favorite group, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, there's a marvelous selection of cars there today, including Peter Giddings right, in his uh, beautiful Alfa Romeo, which will clearly win the race. Um, but there are some other lovely cars out there, and I, I urge you to go uh, seek them out because uh, this is just one of them. Okay, now is this uh, the only car you're involved with in the, under this tent? Uh, no, I'm also driving the uh, the Cooper T51 uh, Grand Prix car behind you, and that's in uh, that's going to be placed in Group Two today. Um, that's a, a very different uh, kettle of fish, as it were. That's a yeah, that's uh, more exciting. Uh, it's quite a bit quicker. <laughs> I bet. Well, Rob, we want to thank you for the interview and wish you luck. Uh, and I can't really wait to see you out there. This car is just gorgeous. And the Cooper is a favorite car of mine. I don't know if you know it or not. In the beginning of our show, we have footage from Lime Rock up here. And for years, that car has been in the beginning of our show, in the opening. Oh, is that right? I had no idea. Uh, my car or just A. Cooper? No, that car. That car. Uh, actually, at the end of the show, it shows you coming out of here and driving away. Okay, well, wonderful. <laughs> and, uh, well, we'll try and do a good job for you guys today. Absolutely. We know you're going to do good, and uh, thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Take care. You are. Yes, we moved over a car, and I'll tell you, this MG is just absolutely gorgeous. Owned by Chris Nolan. And I, I'll tell you, I, this car is stunning. Thank you, thank you. This what a, exactly is it? Well, this is a uh, 1933 MG L2 Magna. It's uh, number two of 90 produced. Uh, they were all two-seat roadsters. And this car is uh, very original, all original body work, uh, all original mechanicals. Uh, and I'm out here racing it today and trying to have a good time. How did you ever acquire this car? Well, that's sort of a long story, but uh, the short version of it is I, I'd been after one of these cars for years, and I knew a guy that had one in Florida, and I heard rumor that it was for sale, so I called him up. I knew him. He said, nah, nah. But we had a nice chat, so I sent him a little bit of a note saying, if you ever do decide to sell, I'm interested. But three years later, I get a call. You don't know me, but my dad was Bill McQuaid. He passed away, and are you interested in buying his car? So I was. <laughs> so uh, a few weeks later, I, I bought it and, and uh, put it in a U-Haul truck and brought it back to California. So Is that where you're from? I was living in Santa Barbara uh, for 30 years and, and uh, bought the car in Florida, but trailered it, towed it with a U-Haul back to California and restored it over a period of seven years. I'll tell you, this car is just stunning. I have never seen an MG so clean and so perfect in my life. Thank you. And they only made how many of these? Ninety. Ninety produced. Wow. Wow, that's so a rare car. This is car. a six-cylinder overhead cam, 
Uh, it's supercharged, uh, fitted with a Marshall supercharger and a Wilson free selector gearbox. So uh, it's sort of an unusual combination. The supercharger and the gearbox were both MG components that weren't technically fitted to this car when it was brand new, but they were available for this model when it was brand new. Okay. So I acquired the supercharger and the gearbox separately. But everything else on the car is uh, really bog stock standard, with the exception of a few, you know, period racing uh, items like the racing screens and a few extra instruments. Now, where do you find parts for like that supercharger, or do you literally got to make them? Well. I knew the guy in California that had that supercharger, and it wasn't really correct for his car, but I, by, by stroke of luck, I ran across the correct supercharger for his car in Australia. So I bought that one and then traded for the one that was correct for my car. Wow. So I never would have gotten it if it weren't for the trade. Well, you guys got to have patience of a saint. Uh, I'll tell you right now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a passion and an affliction, as I've called it, for 40 years. I wish I could catch this disease. I'll be honest with you. Well, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it certainly, you guys are having far too much fun, and somehow i got to find myself into one of these cars. Well, I have to commend you. The car is gorgeous. Uh, we hope you do well this weekend, and uh, I know I've seen it out in the track, and it looks like you're really having fun with it. I am. It's, it's just a blast. I'm not the fastest guy out there, but the car is doing what it was meant to do. So. Absolutely. That's what it's about, and having fun. Thank you. Thank Thanks you a lot, Scott. Okay. You were excellent. As we see the Lime Rock faithful... We come to the conclusion of the show, and I hope everybody has enjoyed it as much as we have producing it. It has been one outstanding day here at Lime Rock, and I hope everybody gets a chance to tune in next week for our next episode of Racing Action Today. <laughs> This program is brought to you in part by SalCal Real Estate Connections. Thanks to the Race in Action Today crew, Dwayne Cody, Bill Majak, David Seidlinger, and Lisa Backus. And also we want to thank our home station, Nutmeg TV for all their support and all the great things they do.